607, goodness. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? No. Team, okay. Uh, warrants are here somewhere. No, so, Wendy didn't say there were any ready. Okay, so no, no warrants. Um, we have uh, we have we had on the agenda um, sharing an update about insurance, and we got I I'm going to call it a communication. About, um, Fred. about insurance. Do yep. you want to share this, Denise? Or do you want me to just mention it quickly um, what it says? Yeah, basically what it says is that um, they don't have an answer yet. Yeah. They're working, they, they've talked to their underwriters and other folks and are waiting for people to get back to them. Um, yeah, Fred actually answered my email over the weekend. And then again today, Kelly answered my e answered that they really don't have anything for us yet so but they are working on it so that's good yep um and they one of the things um i'll add to what denise said is that they're they found they found one carrier but they need more but they you know really didn't get any information so details what that might look like forthcoming and they're continuing to look to see if there's anybody else. And this is specifically around the question of um, downstream liability, not the dam itself, but what happens if the dam fails. So um, that is a no news update. Um, and then I think we should make a finding to go into executive session, the finding being that uh, premature public knowledge would serve as a, would put the public or the- Premature or, public knowledge would clearly place, place the public body or a person involved at a substantial disadvantage. That, is that a motion? That is a motion. For a finding, is there a second? That's a finding. Second. Okay, is there uh, all questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, so we've made the finding. Is there a motion to go into executive private, uh, executive session to discuss attorney-client privilege information pursuant to the finding? And that is? 1 VSA 313A1, I think. So moved. Okay. All right, now who made the motion? Uh, Rick made the motion. Is there a second? Denise is seconding. All in favor, please say aye. 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 John? Huh? Aye. Aye. Okay. We are coming out of executive session. It's about 637. And we went in, um, we went into executive session um, after a finding that premature public knowledge would put the the town or a private individual at um, I always read the language at, um, um, at substantial disadvantage. Sub substantial disadvantage. Uh, we made the motion for the finding and then we went into executive session pursuant to the finding to discuss attorney client privilege information under 1VSA 1 1 313A1. And we are coming out and we have nothing to report. Um, okay. Uh, we are going to, it is six. 37 still. So we're just going to move through our agenda, even though we're a little early because we, 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 we try we, to let people know that that could happen. And we have folks here who are interested in some of the stuff we will talk about anyway. Um, are there any items of pub, is there any public comment for items not on the agenda? Items not on the agenda. Um, I had a couple things I wanted to say about the Curse Pond Dam. I don't know if that should happen now or when it comes up in the ARPA conversation. Well, if it's gonna, if it has to do with ARPA, then we probably want to wait. Yeah, we have the ARPA thing on there. Yeah. Can I say like two other things about it that are not on the agenda? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> And this is the view of the dam? Yes. Um, 
I'll be quick because I know we have a long meeting tonight. <laughs> I hope not. Um, yeah, we're hoping it's a not. long agenda. <laughs> Hopefully it'll be quick. It just looks long. You know, I ran. I, I tried. I posted this on Front Porch Forum, and it wouldn't. It wouldn't take the whole agenda because they said I had too too many characters. <laughs> too many I've run into that. <laughs> We've never wow. run into that yeah. before. Sometimes That's weird. you have to split it into two posts. Anyway, Go ahead. anyway, um, so. I, I feel like a lot of conversation has been happening about liability. And I know there's a lot of fear about the $1 million policy, and we'll know soon if there's more than that. But there were uh, one piece of information we got recently um, is that the liability during construction, the state requires $2 million in liability for, from the contractors. Is that what I'm saying? So the state requires right. Yes, a minimum of two million downstream liability for the construction process. And where do you get that from? And Larry Hebert, who's the contractor we've been talking to most, who will yeah, likely bid on the project. Pond. Yeah, he did Nichols Pond. He typically carries two million dollars. Um, he has done some dams for which they've requested more and would be willing to go up to five million. Um, the last time he did that was I think five, six or eight years ago. Um, and it was $6,000 additional, additional cost. Oh, 6,000. So, yeah. so, so during the state requires five million, but two Larry, million. Two million. Million. Larry Hebert has obtained- He always does the two million. He has million. the ability to bump it he to, can to bump five. He can bump it to five if that's a request for an of added cost of six thousand well, dollars, and that, but that was about five years ago. So okay, right. so, so yeah, he has the ability part. to get additional insurance of up to five million. Of up to five. Up to. Although he, he for an he added didn't really cost. say up to five million. He said he got it for five million. Right, that's what he's done before. Um. And then we just wanted to reiterate, like there's a lot of talk about liability of the town owning the dam and the million dollars. What's missing from that conversation is regardless of what a judge would say or a judgment would be, if the project doesn't move forward because of this roadblock or another similar roadblock, the dam's going to fail at some point, or the state will draw down the pond at some point. And either way, if it fails, we lose houses downstream, we lose roads, it's incredibly expensive, we lose the pond. If it's drawn down by the state, we lose the pond, we lose a huge tax base around the pond, we lose the store, like it's catastrophic to this town. And so I think that I, I worry that the fear of, of liability of ownership is overshadowing that this has to happen. And the liability and the harm that will come from the tap to the town if this doesn't happen is greater than, you know, the chances of it failing a brand new dam. Like we have good contractors, the state has high standards. The reason Passive has the liability they have is because that's what everybody has. That's what, they insure 72 dams, right? And that's what they offer because that's what people are asking for and that's what's required. A new dam, the chances of failure are so small that when you actually calculate chance of having that liability, versus the chance of catastrophic problems if we don't take ownership and move the project forward. The math just doesn't add up. Um, it just has to move forward. So just so you know, I mean, liability, we, we are still checking into. Yes. And PASSIF is looking into it for us. And we've yeah. had some email exchanges and they're waiting to hear back from at least one insurer as to, they, they will, cover it, I don't have email up, but um, you know, what what the, the nature of the policy will be and the costs and all that. Of course. So they still have to get more information back from the insurance company. This select board, as you see it here, constituted here, is not gonna be here post town meeting. I know. 
uh, unless there's a earthquake so, or a nuclear disaster where it's all hands on deck. We may have right. 10, 10 members of a select board or something, but the reality is it's going to be the next select board that's going to make that decision. For sure. Absolutely. So, so my next question is around, there's been four permits additional to the main permit. There are four other permits applications, applications that are awaiting signature that we've had, I think since December 19th or so. And I'm wondering if we can, if there's a, like, is it just getting missed getting on an agenda? Can we get that on an agenda? Or are you all not willing to sign the permits till you s learn more about these other issues? Like, I can't tell if it's we, just we, sort of we not are, happening we or- are, It's not in our first ongoing conversation with our attorney okay. about these various, a whole yeah. list of issues that's on it. Okay. And we're trying to figure out how to best do this. And again, um, it, I mean, there's a, Poss one possible outcome is the bond goes on the warning tonight, um, and you'll see that it'll likely be amended, and and um, it may be the next select board that makes some of these decisions. Well, and the, sure. and the too. bond could fail. The and, bond could fail. And so, for sure. fail. so sequencing, it, sequencing is important. Yeah, our attorney well, we, is advising us to take it one step yeah. at a time. I just worry, what we've heard from folks at the state is that if we wait too long to sign the submit the permit applications mm -hmm. it jeopardizes our ability to complete the project this summer so it would be a bummer if we got the money at town meeting day and everything was ready and we could get the contracts but we're three weeks late on signing the permit applications and we can't get it done can, can we just can you summarize the list of applications i know there's the the dam construction Permit application. Yeah, is there is a wetland think, think conditional so. use determination? We we, we have some we have some emails. Yeah, um, yeah. I can, I don't have them off the yeah. top of my head, yeah. but I can email them to you. Army Corps of Engineers. Army Corps of Engineers. I did already send an email yeah. before. Once yeah, we yeah. Yeah. we we right. do have them. That's the critical. Yeah, yeah. we do have them. So Army Corps. I know we had a, an understanding with the state that as a non-owner taking no responsibility. We could sign the applications right. and have signed previous ones right. with that understanding that we accept no responsibility and right. no liability. Right. Um, we never had that conversation with the Army Corps, to my knowledge. At least I didn't. Right. Um, and I don't. Uh, I, don't I don't know. Will they accept as a non-owner? That was. Yeah. I mean, we kind of paid Jeff Tucker to look into that stuff. So did I he was, give you an answer? My under my understand. I didn't talk I've to Jeff Pauline. I didn't ask him that specific but, question. I just assumed he would. My um, understanding was that was sort of a blanket thing for all yeah. of these. Well, the state can't speak for the core. We need true. to hear from the core. And it, well, it needs okay. to be in writing. Okay. Right. Yeah, we need to have something in writing and we're, so that we have. Something and we're to base waiting, it on. and we haven't unearthed the the written document. On the point you just made, you know, there's some memory or understanding that it exists, but we haven't seen it. I have never seen a written document that says the Army Corps. No, the, the state one. The state one that oh. says that, that says yeah that just because I mean so we'll dig into that. Well, yeah. and yeah, so so but the the bottom line is sequencing is really important, and I'm not sure I I'm not confident that this board will sign those permits. The applications. The permit applications. Okay. It may be the next board, which yeah. might delay us a year. But well, it, I mean, it's it, if it delays us a year, it delays us a year, and we, we hope it doesn't fail. Right. But we get it, you know. But at the same time, we have an obligation to town For sure. that you know we can't just say, okay, we'll take that risk. No, yeah. you know that. There is a sequence to this. this is a complicated for sure thing because it's of the ownership issues and insurable issue. I mean, this is not an yeah. easy. We're our, law, our lawyers are giving us right. advice, right? So right. we have to be careful about <laughs> for sure. Yeah, for sure. Not, not we have to ask. Kind of, we're kind of like juggling. Yeah. 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 No. We want absolutely. This time part we, yeah. Have so we we hear you though. So we we are you know John gave you the teaser. We are going to take up the petition, and yeah. um. Is, where is that? That's coming right up. It's coming right up. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so I think that's, that's yeah. what I wanted to just. Yeah. So we, we want to get to that while you guys are still yeah, here. Yeah, yeah. I'll stick um, around. And then I want to stick around for the 
our part conversation. We, we might move too. that around. If we're moving along quickly, we might, yeah. we might move that up yeah. because yeah. Th there's nothing else on the ARPA list that is as interesting, perhaps. <laughs> right. Um, all right, so is there, thank you, Jane. Yeah. Is there a motion on the consent agenda items that are so, so moved? Mostly housekeeping here. Um, I'll second that motion. Okay. Um, any questions about consent agenda? All in favor, please say. Aye. Aye. Okay, that's well. We have to. Consent. That's what took up a big piece of the agenda. Right. <laughs> um, we we made a bunch of appointments. One thing I do want to mention because it came up in some email is that we are getting caught up on appointments that we should have made last year. So mm -hmm. when we say that there are reappointments for ending in March 2023, that is actually what it means. Right. Um, that's not a typo. Denise had to convince me it wasn't a typo. But we're but again, we're not going to get ahead of the future board. Right. Um, and and so they can reappoint these people again in six weeks. Right. For another year ending. And everybody pretty much has said that they would continue to serve. So also as what is on the consent agenda is signing the PDR four one five five form, um, which I have here. Which um, relates to the this is, reassessment, right? It has to do with property evaluation. It's confirming that there's no present suit pending to recover taxes paid under protest. Right. Okay. So, so you're going to send this around. Okay. And uh, then also um, authorizing um, the acting road commissioner to sign the municipal roads general permit notice that we have to sign every year. Okay. Um, consent agenda part two, we're taking up separately because. Wait a minute, I'm still writing. Okay. Um, consent agenda part two is has to do with East Cal's Community Trust. So I will recuse myself, but can I continue to write and sit here? Yes, of course you can. You're recusing yourself because you're a member of the ECCQ board. Right. Okay. So. Um, I circulated to John and Rick for your feedback, and we got feedback, um, incorporated feedback from our attorneys. These have been heavily vetted, these two documents uh, related to the ECCT project and taking on grants from the state. Um, I signed them this morning, and I'm looking for you guys to ratify, for all of the three of us to ratify the approval and signature that I provided. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. John seconds. Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Denise is recused. Mm -hmm. Okay. And John seconded it? John yes, seconded it. Okay. okay, so now, let's. Hold on just one second. We're moving to that. If we're done with that. Um, can you just sign here and I'll finish filling this out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And get it to the state because we have, to, then we get we have to get it in by January Hang 26th. On. So. John, and Rick made the motion and John seconded. I'm gonna, Denise, try to back you up with some language, just some notes here. Okay. Um, I, the first consent agenda, I missed who made the motion. It was me and John. Okay, yeah, I'm sure you've got that too. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so now let's skip the curb cut ordinance until Stephanie gets here and pre shade tree preservation and the emergency management item um, and town meeting. I think we need to do town meeting only one block. Um, so yeah. let's do... Um, Want to do personnel update? Yeah, we could do that. We could do the... Do we not want to do the petition item while... And the, oh, or, yeah, we can do that, sure. Let's do that petition item yeah. while Jamie okay. and... Um, Jamie and Marjorie here. Where did I put that? Oh, yeah, it's on my computer. I got it right here. So well done getting that petition. Yeah, congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, congratulations. congratulations. So the petition article reads. Denise, are you making a motion? I am making a motion. For the um, petition reads, the article says, Shall general obligation bonds of the town of Cal's an amount not to exceed $450,000 subject to reduction from available state or federal grants or other financial assistance be issued for the purpose of renovation of the Curtis Pond Dam 
to state dam safety standards. So that's the way the petition reads, and the board has the ability to either accept or reject the language. So my motion is that we accept the language. Is there a second? Second it. Okay. Okay. Discussion? Uh, yes, discussion. discussion. So it's come to my attention that the article, as it's been written, doesn't comply with statute, specifically 24 VSA 1755, but it can be amended so that it does comport with statute. So I'd like to propose a friendly amendment to allow for that. So Denise just read the article, um, yeah, the article mm -hmm. um, that was petitioned and that's before this board and this vote. I'd like to add um, after the word, the last word of the article, which is standards, the following language. The estimated total cost of which is $700,000. Okay, that's your friendly amendment to yeah. my motion? Yeah, and so what that does, you, you're, you're required to include the total cost of a project when you propose a bond, and this, right. this um, article as petitioned did not also have the total cost of the project included. But, so John, um, so that's what my amendment does. So okay. John makes the motion to make I'm second it, and Denise is seconding. Okay. And, our, we and ran it's an the estimated language. total cost. We that's ran the language past our attorney, so it's all good. Okay. Yeah. Is there any other discussion about the um, article? No, the amendment. I need a vote and, on the amendment. And the amendment. Oh, well, okay, you're right. We have to do any other discussion about the amendment to the article? No. Nope. All in favor of the amendment, please say aye. 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 Any other discussion, questions about the petition and the proposed article itself? No. So just to be clear for folks, what this means is that the board has um, accepted the petition. It'll be on the board. I don't, on we the haven't board. voted on it yet, but... I thought we did. We just no, voted, on the we amendment. voted on the amendment oh, okay. to the article. Okay. Sorry. So we need to vote on the All right. article as amended. All right. Are there um, any other questions or comments on the the article as amended? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Now, Denise. <laughs> so what this means is the article will go on the morning and it will go on the ballot. It has to go, I found out and learned today, we learned something new again. You, even though it's going to be on the ballot, you still put the article on the warning so that, and you just put a thing after it that it's on the Australian ballot. So we have that language. Mm -hmm. um, and we will amend the article to include this new little bit of information. And then we have to, and we'll be talking at, when we do town meeting stuff about informational meetings, because we have to have an informational meeting. And my question mm -hmm. that I still don't have an answer to yet is can we do, if we decide to do town meeting not in person, can we do an informational meeting that includes town meeting stuff and the bond? So that's kind of where we're at. And our working assumption is we can, even if we have one at noon and one at 1245. Right. right. Um, but anyway, so yes, it will be on the ballot. Yep. OK. Um, Do we want to do the ARPA funds? Sure. So we warned for 840 and it is now 657. <laughs> um, but we're just mixing it up. Anybody, I don't think anybody's going to object to it. So we have talked about, um, we've, we've, we've had several requests and we have um, identified a couple of other places where ARPA funds are a really good fit. Um, and they're on our agenda item. We, a few weeks ago, approved um, a grant application through FEMA <coughs> emergency funds, I think it was, for a generator grant that the town has to match um, the grant. And so the town's 50% match is $16,092. We talked about using ARPA, but that wasn't the way the motion was made, point number one. Um, the Conservation Commission asked in the 2024 budget for funds for an invasive species study, a one-time expense, and that seemed like a great fit for ARPA funds. So we took those out of the proposed budget and have them here. We have the Curtis Pond Dam 
um, request for 100,000 and the East Calus Fire District for 60,000. Uh, each of those last two um, is a double of the original request from the organizations. So um, I'm, I'm gonna ask for a motion, I think, around approving the generator grants, the invasive species study, and the East Calus Fire District. Um, carving Curse Pond out for a second discussion and motion. Is there a motion on the first, on the generator grant, 16,000, the invasive species, 15,000, and East Calus Fire District, 60,000? Is there a motion? So moved. Okay, on so those three. Correct. I'll Is second it. Denise is seconding it. And just to be clear, ARPA funds have to be used for like one time things. They can't be ongoing expenses like salaries and things like that. It has to be a one time Right. Can I just ask how much total you guys Over 400,000. So we got 429. We received 477, 479, 477 and 36 cents. Okay. Um, and we already committed 100,000, just in case people don't know, 100,000 to CB Fiber, um, a traffic study, 30,000. Town office historical indexing 28,000. 28, 20,000 we gave for that one. 20,000, right. Thank you for. Yeah, oh no, we gave our, uh, we gave CB5 or 200,000. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so there's a motion on three of the four items, and there was a second. Is there any other question or discussion on those three? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. On the Curtis Pond Dam, 100,000. Um, again, on the, on the, can I, do you guys want me to speak to this or does somebody sure. else want to speak to it? Um, on the point of sequencing and um, not getting too far down the path, um, we want to, we, we want to sort of pencil the 100,000, um, not write the check, wait to see what happens with the bond vote, but express the, you know, through we are going to take a vote, but express our general support for the, uh, for the, uh, for the appropriation. appropriation. So I think I'll ask for a motion to approve the 100,000 contingent on a successful bond vote at town meeting. Okay, I make, I'll second. Oh, okay. You're making it, John? Okay. I'll make that motion. Okay. So this is um, a, a motion to approve the one hundred thousand the allocation of one hundred thousand dollars of ARP, of the ARPA federal ARPA fund monies toward the Curtis Pond the construction of the Curtis and or engineering of the Curtis Pond Dam project contingent, contingent on, upon voter approval contingent on passage. Yeah, mm -hmm. of the bond. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Does that money have to be used by a certain time? It has, it's, we have two years to spend. Two years. And, yeah, and, quite a bit of time. Yeah, okay. Um, I, we should probably make it contingent on the bond vote and um, other other issues of concern being resolved, such as the project moves forward. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna be a, we don't want to hamstring the I'm sorry, what, what are we, your, your Contingent on the bond vote and other, passage of the and other issues of concern being resolved such that the project moves forward under the leadership of a, different, of a future board. And other issues of being resolved such that Excellent. the project moves forward under the leadership of a future board. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion, comments? All James? Just one clarifying question. Mm -hmm. Hypothetically, if the bond failed, mm -hmm. but we were able to secure the funding other ways, that could be amended by the future select board. A future board yeah. could be. We can't hamstring right. a future board. Right. Yeah. That's no, why, I know, that's but why, it's not right. like that's why we're doing, That's why we're doing it this way, <clears throat> so that there's an opportunity if you need to do something different. Yep, yep. The money will st still be there, and a future board can say, well, it failed that contingency, but oh, look, there's still money here. Right, or look, right. somebody gave you. Right. It's our rational for well. setting it aside. Yeah. That's all it is. All right, okay, so, so I seconded it. Is you it, got the language? 
Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Okay, so that's done. Stay. And Mark is Mark recusing. Stay. Recused. Recused, yeah. Um, uh, hi, Mark. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> I was so intent. I didn't even say hi. I saw you come in. But I, I saw you come in. We were all super focused. He looks beat up and the session's just started. Okay, so we are. So, Mark, we just finished the 840 item. Uh, and we're along. Yeah, well, no, we I haven't done some nice. of the earlier items. Um, Neil, Stephanie is ahead of you. Um, and I know that when she gets here, she, um, is she going to want to weigh in on the tree thing? Well, she may or may not, but I want to make sure that we don't make her wait for a 45 minute through a 45 minute discussion on trees right. to get to the curb cut ordinance. So I'm going to welcome you and, and not go immediately to your issue. Um, <laughs> we are really jumping around tonight, guys. Let's do the personnel update, Denise. Yeah. Um, we had talked at a previous meeting about Sharon and I getting together with the town administrator at East Belt Pillar to review the job description and see um, what new ideas we might come up with and maybe how to revise the job description, how to advertise. I mean, if you look at our advertising budget for looking for the treasurer and the um, business manager, position and DPW, it's high because we have put a lot of effort into advertising for those positions. We've had applicants, none of them seem to work out for various reasons. Um, so we decided that given that there will be a new board, it makes sense to wait for that board to be able to weigh in and yeah. take the role in moving the, moving the position forward. In other words, we're not going to go meet with the East Montpelier folks to, for Sharon and Denise to learn a lot about how they organize their town government. We realize, um, you know, we could still do that if somebody wants some help, but let's let the next, we're not going to be able to finish that project and wrap it all the way up no, before and, somebody else takes over. So we'll stay focused on things that we need to finish up. Yeah, without opening up new, new things. Right. So that's that's the plan. So we are sort of so we all you guys voted to you all us to go. Us. Yeah, so we're we're just saying we're yeah, but still we're not gonna do it. Are we <clears throat> question? Are we still running ads? We haven't in not the last since the end of the year. Weeks. Yep. Right. Yep. Is it our intention to run ads or after now mm -hmm. or to wait? I don't you we're know if they now? the new board may want to make changes to the job descriptions. Yeah. So it doesn't make sense to run ads for jobs that the job description may change. Bringing candidates in who... Yeah, and I mean, I'm happy to help the new board and, and say, you know, this is what these jobs really do. Um, I'm happy to help the new board do that. Anyway, that was just housekeeping to... Yeah, that was just an update. Wrap up something we opened and say, never mind, we're not going to do it. And we're meeting on the thirtieth mm -hmm. with the union. With the union, that is now, not a. That is not a hang on, hang on. Sorry. So the union is not a public meeting. We're just saying that so people are sort of informed. Right, and we don't even have to advertise those meetings. No. There was not the meeting I missed was we did we we have not met with them. not yet. No. We haven't even met it with them yet. Federal holiday. This will be a Sunday. this will be a hi nice to meet you. Um, Conversation, and we're doing and it here at mm -hmm. seven mm -hmm. and a week next week. Is this a similar? How are we going to handle the same issue that you guys just raised? I think we'll have to. We'll tell them Monday night what the what what's happening, and then they just have to decide mm -hmm. if they're right. going to wait or if they yeah. want to negotiate right. with mm -hmm. us, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. okay. Because because the same thing is true. Anything we agree to, even though you know none of us are going to be here in six weeks, we are the board. Right. So anything we agree to is we, now that would be contractually right. binding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. We don't want to hamstring. Yeah. Right. I mean, although there is a possibility, we they might say, "Hey, give us this," and it's a reasonable presentation. And we could say, "Okay." I yeah, mean, that's might, pie right. in the sky. I mean, but that would be nice. If I were them, that's what I would do. Right. I would. It would be nice. Devil, you know. Yeah, you know. It would be nice to just get this done. Well. And not 
Yeah. Maybe, and, maybe that will happen. Yeah, maybe. And similarly, if someone, there's still knowledge of our interest in a DPW director and a treasurer slash administrative assistant, um, if someone came forward, we would still be willing to conduct an interview and business business manager. Yeah, because yeah, I, I do think I understand your thinking that you just might wait that on the positions. <clears throat> At the same time, it, if there's an opportunity to fill a position, yeah, somebody mm -hmm. wonderful steps nice, forward. It would really be great because it's true we don't want to tie the hands of the new board. Mm -hmm. But it's also true that it would be nice if the board didn't have to inherit the same problem we've been living with. So. Right. Right. right, right. No, no doubt. No, no, no doubt. somebody wonderful step forward and, you know, it was a good fit and a good match. Yeah. But in terms of, again, in terms of, you know, continuing to advertise and bring people in and have somebody partway through the process when a new board comes in, that just feels super awkward for everybody. Well, yeah, it doesn't seem, you know, the new board should be involved. Okay, so that's the personnel update. Can, um, Ro can Rick do his roads report? Gosh, Rick. Um, yeah, let's... Yeah, let's do that. Do? Yeah. I mean, right now, it's, it's, we're all in uh, plowing and sanding mode. It's been a challenging winter, it's been a, with, uh, even though we have not gotten a lot of snow. We well, got a lot of, yeah, we've gotten some this week. Um, we have got put a lot of sand down. You know, it's very slippery. I see we've got a continuous. It's almost like a mini mud season. Well, I shouldn't say an extended mud season. You know, we've had thawing roads intermittently because we've had, you know, temperatures in the 30s, even 40 degrees. So the guys have been doing a great job. Even, I will say I really commend them. I just got uh, a text today from U32 or from First Student and from the bus people. You know, we, they said the, those callous roads, they're finding them better than they have been for years. And that's wow. like a lot in a year like wow. this. This is a, these are wet, slippery snow. So these are the worst. Usually in January, you know, we have these dry, very sticky snows that get good traction. We haven't had that this one. It's all been transitional. So these are typically the worst. And then combined with the fact that we've got all this severe rutting and, you know, it's uh, it's a real. So they said the roads are in the best. Yeah, Rick and the years. best. They said they. they the text said they were the best condition they've seen. In and years. did you say who the text came from, or did you not want to say? Yes, it, it came from Shock at First Student. It's oh, great! And he's, he manages all the bus, and so this is good. This is a and we're down a person, right? We're down because a we person. never filled the commissioner. Person. Yeah, it's actually been working. working commissioner. So. It's working very well. The guys well, are getting. That's really we're really getting out on the roads at three thirty in the morning, which wasn't happening. Before. I don't think we're down a position. We still have four road crew guys. Right. Well, what I mean is, we don't have the road crew. Oh, had four with the working commissioner. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, well, we, we, I'm wrong. The point here is that we're doing. Yeah, we're doing very, very well, and we're getting all the bus routes are clear by morning, and better yet, if, as you know, it takes four and a half to six hours to kind of finish a route. It all depends on what kind of conditions are out there. But I'm actually doing the rodeo route, the, you know, the route completion time is actually going much faster now than it did in the past. And it's, it's better distributed. So we are, uh, yeah, I think we're just getting better service in general. And certainly that, I'm finding even, you know, they're pretty much done by 5.30. <coughs> Six o'clock. I'm seeing most of the roads ready. Certainly, all the snow emergency routes, and I mean the uh, the school bus routes, and yeah. So it's very impressive. Everybody, That's great. They're, Thank you. They're doing a wonderful job, and they're yeah. so wonderful to deal with. Yeah. I, I also want to say I think you're doing a wonderful. Job. Yes. Yes. Thanks. No yeah, worries. you are. They make it easier. Yeah, I'll tell you that's. Is there the, a great leadership in that group? Um, Are you supposed to get another major snow midweek? Yeah, midweek and or, yeah, then again maybe, over the weekend. How big? We don't know. There's I think there's two right. coming. There are two coming. Awesome. Yeah, but we just <laughs> love it. I know. Depending on the, 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 the patterns seem to be generally south of us. You know, so we get on the not, well, not what they said today. Well, maybe on this, this one. This one is supposed to be the other way around. So I thought oh, really? it's going to be a rebate. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think we'll see the same kind of performance with these guys. I did just get a, I will say, I did get a complaint from a 
a Whisker resident about using Sand Hill, but they, they said they got trapped, they got stuck on Sunday night at 11.30 p.m. on Sunday, while hauling a car on a trailer. And so I said, you know, I responded and kind of said, we don't really plow, our guys are out. We do, we, the most we can do is about two rounds in a day. They're on the roads at 3.30 if it's snowing. That storm started later in the evening, really, so it probably wasn't touched at that point, but they were up at 3.30 in the morning sanding. I said, we you should not be moving towing vehicles at 11.30 on a Sunday night at night and, and expect to be safe. I said, even oh, during yeah. a storm, you don't want to be doing it because it takes six hours to plow a route. Well, they're you, taking a chance. They're absolutely taking a chance. I mean, we can't maintain, I mean, we only have so much staff and, you know, it, you, if it's snowing hard, you can get an inch or two falling an hour. And that covers up anything you've got. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying don't, 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 don't haul vehicles later. Right. Yeah. Yeah, during snowstorms. Great. Anything else? No, that's so great. No, great. They're doing wonderful. They're, they're, they say thank you, which. <clears throat> That's a huge difference. Just a thing. Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually, and that's you know when I was really pleased to hear that from first student. Mm -hmm. These guys are on the roads and they're in the most. The school buses are very difficult to drive on in snow conditions. They're real rear, rear wheel drive. They're long. They're narrow. I mean, they're tall, and you know they have automatic chains, which are not very good. They're not like what are automatic spinner chains? chains. They're spinner they chains. Just drop that, down. They well, aren't on your the chains restrict your speed on vehicles. Right. You can't go fast. So are they like spider spikes that come on like that. No, no, they, they spin down against under the tire. It's a spinning disc that has chains that stick out, and they kind of fly under the wheels. So they improve your traction a little bit, but they're not locked up to the tires. They can be spit out. And you so can't it, and you can't use them on the paved road. Yeah, no, chains. Yeah, so they, you know, they. That means a lot when we get a comment like that from the, from the school, so I think that I was impressed. Thank you. Right. Excellent. Wonderful. Stephanie, perfect timing. We're ready for you. Yeah. While you while you come forward and take your catch your breath and take your coat off, I'm just gonna review for folks that we've we've had to, we've jumped around a lot because we um, got it early earlier than we anticipated start. So we have con completed both sections of the consent agenda. Um, we finished the ARPA funds vote. We had a road report. We did the personnel update. And we um, processed the item related to uh, the Curtis Pond Dam petition. We haven't done, generally, we haven't done the town meeting section, but we did do that one thing. And now Stephanie's here to talk to us about the work that the Conservation Commission has been doing related to our curb cut ordinance. We have a curb cut ordinance that you have you already. Have a, you have that statute. Yes, it's the 2004 ordinance. It hasn't been revisited. Yeah, your curb cut was from 2004 or less. Uh, last time. Yeah, yeah and, and then there's the um, state statute. Right, so as we gear up to reviewing and making updates, the Conservation Commission <coughs> expressed some interest in weighing in, and I asked Stephanie to come tonight just uh, just to give uh, some brief, you know, brief comments about what, we're not gonna vote on anything, just to hear what you guys have been up to, what your thoughts are. Do yeah, we, I'll, do we have a draft? No, we don't have that. Okay. No, no, there's no draft so still anything right now. Still yeah, doing that. Okay. yeah, but, um, I just want to, so let me explain where this came from. You know, you may be aware that uh, on Nelson Pond Road, somebody got a curb cut to build a garage mm -hmm. at the top of a hill. It's a 14% grade and uh, it was legal. All right. It wasn't, it was legal, 14%. And it was a, an accessory to a house that was there because it was a garage. So, um, you know, there was a site visit and, and uh, you know, they talked about Oh, cutting down some of these trash trees that were might have been impeding, that was their words, might have been impeding the sight lines. They got a curb cut permit, and um, 
I think, I don't have the permit, I think there were a few conditions on it, but in any event, they made a huge mess. And they were right across from Nelson Pond, right across the road. So it was a huge mess, and, and the zoning administrator and the state got involved because there were these discharges into the lake and made them do all kinds of um, uh, you know, erosion control stuff. Yeah, I remember that. So you know, I saw it, other people saw it, and said, wait a minute, <laughs> you know, this shouldn't have happened. And so, um, well, for one thing, the, the planning commission is changing the definitions so that there, a road no longer will, will cut off the district. So that, that was a problem because it was very close to the pond, but it wasn't in the Shoreland district because it was on the other side of the road. But anyway, it was a mess. And so I and other members of the Conservation Commission started thinking about, is there some way that, that the curb cut ordinance could include some natural resource protections? And um, you know, we talked about the kinds of things that we would like to see. For instance, you know, the slope of the driveway, at least where it comes into the road. Or, you know, are there wildlife crossings right there? Or, you know, there's there's things, is there a wetland or a fen, you know, right next to this thing. So there are things that we would like to see protected. So I talked to Joe McLean, our lawyer, and it just happened that Joe had been involved and in, he litigated a case that it ended up that they, the court didn't rule on that aspect of it. But he wrote a brief about why you, the select board has the authority to include environmental considerations in the curb cut permit. And I have, he sent me his brief. I went, oh, that's good. And it's based basically on the um, provisions of this very, very weird statute, the state statute, which is um, 19 VSA section 1111. Um, and it, it, talks, it talks, about, talks about a lot of stuff for the state, and then it talks about municipal. It's funny, it never uses the word curb cut, and in fact, it only uses the word access permit in such place, but I'll talk about that in a minute. So there's several pieces of language in that very opaque statute. Uh, one of them is, as a condition of any such permit, compliance with all local ordinances and regulations relating to hideways and land use shall be regulated, shall be required. And then the sentence continues for eight more lines. And you know, you got to read it. You will not believe this sentence. I mean, it's eight <laughs> lines in this statute. Um, but it also references the need to be consistent with the planning goals of 24 VSA 4302 and to be compatible with, with any regional plan, state agency plan, or approved municipal plan. Well, there's a lot there. I mean, you go to any of them, you go to our town plan, you go to the planning goals of 24 VSA 4302, and there's a lot there about the importance of the natural resources, of various natural resources. And that's what Joe was relying on in his brief. And he's saying, look, you know, there it is, plain language. So, um, and our, Zoning regulations, our town plan, have abundant language about the importance of protecting various natural resources and, and, and the planning goals of 24 VSA 4302 do as well. So, um, okay, so we felt, okay, good, we can do that, we can do it. And then, you know, the Conservation Commission is talking about it, we're thinking, well, how far from the actual cut could be regulated in an ordinance? Because though you know you have the highway and you have the highway right of way and you have this cut into the highway right of way, but then you have things as I just mentioned. You have things like you know a vernal pool right next to it. Well, what's interesting is that as I said, it doesn't use the cur you term the curb cut. It says it states this, it says well, section one 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 b of nineteen VSA states. It's unlawful to develop, construct, regrade, or resurface any driveway entrance or approach without a written permit by the select board. Oh, approach. Well, you approach it from up there, from the driveway. You approach it from the left and from the right. And so he said, look, this aspect. That's in the statute. That's in the statute. That is the language in the statute. And. I think it was in the package that was the, originally you had about curb cuts that I think Sharon, somebody sent around that you had. 
Um, I can certainly. It's been know. ages. We had a link. There is still actually a link in our. Yeah, it's 19 VSA section. No, there's still a link here on the agenda if you have it electronically to a folder. Oh, of oh good. To the whole package of the whole package cut of stuff. stuff yeah. that I shared with you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I. That's what the yeah, conservation okay. commission was using as well. Um, you know, so Joe's saying, look, it's never been litigated. The plain language says that the, the curb cut permit can include da 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 and has to, in fact, comply with town plan, zoning, regional plan, planning goals of 24 VSA 4302. Joe said, go for it. So we just need to write a, a, a policy advisory or something that we incorporate those. So, you so the, planning, yeah. the planning commission is actually, and the reason we've been carrying this for a while is because there were a couple of things that, that we wanted to add, mostly just around the process for approving a curb cut process. And Stephanie saw it on our agenda and said, hey, the planning commission or the um, conservation commission is interested in this topic would you let us work on it? So I asked her if she would review it against the statute, you know, as a favor, since they're gonna open it up. Is it current generally? And then also, you know, what do you wanna propose? So they're gonna come back to us. This is just the teeing up an awareness for all of us. They're gonna come back to us. You're mostly done. And we can, and we've been carrying this, I think for more than a year as a future agenda item. Right. So. The goal is you're going to bring us a proposal. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you're going to actually make the proposed revisions and present them to us. This we don't have to do revisions to the ordinance. Yeah, provisions. Yeah, we have to revise the ordinance. Okay. You know, it was was signed in 2004. Yeah, right. And right. I read yeah. the ordinance pretty carefully, and then I read ordinances in some other in some other towns, and I thought, you know, there's some other things in this ordinance that need to be fixed. Oh yeah, it's and crazy. Added to. And you know, I'm happy to take a stab at it as as a draft, a proposal. And then the conservation commission, well, they meet like the sec we meet the the, the first of February. Mm -hmm. Yes, the first Wednesday of February. And what m my intention is is to have the Conservation Commission, you know, I'll give them a draft of something because we talked about it. everybody has ideas. I'll incorporate them into something. I'll write it. And then the Conservation Commission will go over it. And if they feel like there's something enough for them to say, okay, select board here, this is what we propose. Mm -hmm. And then I also talked to Joe about the process because of adopting it because obviously I really really like you to do a revised ordinance. If it's an ordinance, we have to go through a process. Right. right. Yeah. What? Right. It's an it's ordinance. An ordinance we have to, there's a process <clears throat> we have to go through. Yeah, yeah, well, I was really surprised. I mean, I called oh, yeah. Joe and said, is this really right? Yeah. All you have to do is put it on your agenda at a regular meeting. You don't have to have a special meeting. Mm -hmm. Put it on your agenda at a regular meeting. Right. You can adopt it if you want then. And then the citizens have 60 days right. to file a petition. I never realized I that. So I read it and I told Joe, I said, is that real true? He I said, yeah. 45. To 60 me, days. Whole, to me, the process is backwards, sort of. You adopt it. I know. I know. 60 days, it goes into effect. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so, so they can, they, uh, the, you have to get a petition to uh, to revoke the ordinance or that we've already that, adopted. That we've adopted. So it's, to me, it's kind of like a lot of things are like that, though. It's yeah. really backwards. It's so it's interesting. Backwards. It's like you do it; it goes into effect unless people object. Right. right. Well, it goes into effect in so sixty days. Sixty days after adoption. But permits are like that. You know, a permit yeah. that's awarded by the the DRB or the zoning administrator, goes people have X number of days. Process. You have to wait for the appeal process. Right. So you just have right. to appeal. But this is an odd thing. But right. You have anyway, to wait a petition. You have you to wait it out. Petition. Mm -hmm. And then if you get that petition within 60 days and it meets all the requirements, then you you have to hold, there has to be a town, I think a town-wide vote. Um, I think that's what it says. The question is, to, is there a way of linking this to, you know, our other environmental, basically the other environmental documents, so that it's more of a living, like if we, if we write these pieces into the curb cut, you know, into our permit Ordinary. process, yeah. then you, then we're constantly revising it. Can we actually, I mean, if we actually try to link these in a way so that as changes, as these get revised. It's not legal. 
I don't know if you can. You can't not. make a regulation <laughs> that, that automatically <laughs> updates. You have okay. to read well, we can. I was just you'd trying to do something. Right. Right. You'd, you'd have to come back and amend, Modify amend okay. the ordinance. Yeah. Well, and the other thing. And that's is, actually yeah. what this is. This is an amendment. Right. Right. Of an ordinance, but it's the same process as yeah. like a new one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, one, it's been 15 years. One issue to okay. keep in mind. As you, More I think as you draft, a lot of the curb cuts that we see are like no-brainers. The real issue is they don't involve these issues. They just involve sight lines. It's true. And it really helps us in terms of our workload if there's just, you know, it used to be the road commissioner that we have to figure out how we're going to handle that. But basically a staff member just goes out, measures, is the side of the sight lines there? It's non-discretionary, either they are. You know, it's like checking, it's like a building permit. Yeah. Are they or aren't they? Right. And we want to make sure that we preserve some path for the easy ones, but some kick out for all the kind of stuff we're talking about. Well, one well, idea we had was to um, maybe have a checklist. Well, that's what we were going to do right. on the, on the, on the no-brainer, just does it yes or no, black and white. Um, and if there's questionable, and if there's questionable, then you know, then the the road commissioner, whoever's delegated the authority to review, can come in here. Um, I think that that is something for you to, you know, keep in mind in your own thinking about it. Is who who and how would the the additional dimensions oh, yeah, exactly. be assessed? Right. Who would do that? Well, and some towns zoning administrators are more involved. In curb cuts? Yeah, in curb yeah. cuts. And well, you know, there's different process. Sometimes they go from this person to that person. I think Wastefields is quite involved Makes of going sense. to different people. So I mentioned to Stephanie about the B71 standards that we generally use for sight distance. Those are in Those the ordinance. Just, they're, they're right. that's, the, that's what AOT the requires. It's the safety. Right. But that's based just, on engineering. We just kind of have those as kind of the boilerplate of yeah. sight for the sight distance. Piece. And drainage. All and you know all of those right. stuff, and, but that right. this is a different animal. It's actually a really good idea. Yeah, yeah, it is the good question idea. is, how do you do in that too? We have to be careful how we craft it. I mean, there's we do you know we need to be able to make sure people can access their property. So do well, we, Stephanie, there, yeah, of course. We that's do the this whole in point. a way that right. you try to you want to be able to out and out block certain things, but you also want to try to find the best. I mean, from my mind, you want to give some kind of a function. We don't, this isn't just a, something to just stop people from being able to access a piece of land. It's about so putting I, access in the best places, correct? I mean, right, and that's the plan. This will yeah. make it so that I think it's better because there have been concerns that I, I have had completely. about wildlife and wetlands and stuff yeah. like that. There's no way to address them currently. Well, and it goes back to conversation we had, you know, Frequently over the past, you know, many years, about about incorporating our <coughs> in, efforts around environmental stewardship with, you know, yeah. incorporating and integrating rather than having siloed things around road maintenance or curb cut reviews. Um, instead, you know, think about it more holistically. So well, this is great. Yeah, it, it is the good. whole road system. I mean, you can look and come on and pass. I mean, it's been very destructive. It's been really destructive to the environmental, a lot of ecosystems in this state. I mean, really bad. You know, from the interstates down. And so this is a, a good effort toward, you know, start changing that thinking. The yeah. roads don't rule. This is about. Yeah. So you, so you think you'll have something for us for our first meeting in? February. I think that's on the what is your first meeting? Um, I have a calendar. The sixth, February thirteenth. I'm not, you're not meeting the 6th. No, the 13th. Like it's the 2nd and the 4th. So the first one is February 13th. So maybe the 4th. So we or could, the so the 13th. Can I work on it? Yeah. I Joe said also he'd be happy to look at something. Yeah. 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 Our two. Especially he wrote that brief. That's great. Right. We Especially have it. He wrote that brief. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah. so cool. Of all the. Right. It's, it's the only good. case that everyone before the Supreme Court and. It was Joe. We have it um, in the list for the 13th. Um, and then there are other meeting in February is February 27th. So, so yeah, so again, tonight was really just for Stephanie to give us a preview and make us aware of this 
work that they've been doing that we asked them to do and that it's coming to a close, hopefully. Coming yeah. to a point where you can actually bring a recommendation to us. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Thank it would you. be great. I, yeah, what I'd like to do is get you something, obviously, ahead of the 13th so that there can be a real substantive discussion. Yeah. Right. And then there would be, well, we could somehow figure out how to if make revisions or you could make revisions or however. So maybe if we can if we can allocate half an hour yeah, that good. night. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, because we can make the board can approve something with the, with the understanding that these changes are going to be made, but we also have to have a signature page. Have to have what? A signature page for us to sign. Um, yeah, and also um, as I said, I looked at it and I saw some things on there that I thought should be uh, clarified, actually, or a little clearer about the process that's mm -hmm. there. You we know, just and I'm just have, wondering, just, should I <coughs> should yeah, I go I ahead and try yeah, to I think do so, something with it? But we got to have it in time enough for us to all have a chance to read it. So, so the meeting. my my perspective on this, if we're going to make changes in terms of who authorizes, I would strongly encourage that it be the road commissioner with in collaboration with the zoning administrator um, can I can, because um, road commissioners in charge of the roads it can be a delegate road. so what our old policy says is the select board shall oh, right. and designate. yeah so if it just says the select board or a designee mm -hmm. yeah that's what the statute says yeah, or, yeah that's okay. what the statute said right. but not what our policy said Right. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, right. we right. never right. had that clear. Yeah. Yeah. That we could have a designee. Yeah. That's yeah. what I mean. There are things like yeah. that. That's yeah. Not that not that clear. Yeah. Kind of enforcement up to the board. Yep. Okay. We don't have to script to the designee. So I you just want to talk about? Yeah. Call me. What? They're going to be John. I sent a link to Stephanie and the board members to the VLCT Quick Guide to Ordinance Adoption Amendment or Repeal, and it's got a checklist. Yeah. That you go through with all the all the timing and if there's a challenge, you know, process for a special meeting on that. Stephanie, so. thank you very much. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. you know, it's exciting. I really appreciate it. Something we would love to see this. We would yeah, like to see make us very yeah, happy. like to see it yeah. done too. <laughs> yeah. Uh Neil, you would next. So we warned this um, item tonight only as discussion because we wanted to make sure that we wrapped up the conversation. The last time you were here, there were a couple of points. This is on the shade tree preservation plan. There were a couple of points of what about and yeah, but. And, and I know that you said in email you'd work those out, but we wanted to give you a chance to just give us the update and we're not gonna vote on it tonight. So yep. that Yeah, you said you had talked to Dan Singleton, right? Yeah. yeah, Dan Singleton had, I think, the most kind of substantive comments about it. <clears throat> and um, I talked with him and then met with the Conservation Commission. And the, the two changes that came out of that were one, just clarifying he was concerned about silvicultural activities mm -hmm. that are kind of protected in some ways in state law and wanting to make sure we weren't stepping on the toes of people who are doing valid silvicultural stuff. Um, so added some language that just says that the select board can't like unreasonably stop silvicultural activities. Can you explain, use that word or not, uh, just sil spell, spell the word, spell the word. Oh, S-I-L-V-I culture. Okay, it's all S I L V I. Yeah. It's all one word. It's all one word. So, Just so meaning um, uh, forestry management activities that so no, follow no it's I. No, there's no A. It's silver culture. I. Yeah. Dan, yeah. these are Dan's. Okay. So you would address Dan's issues regarding silver culture? Yeah, so we, um, so that, and then he also kind of was. Um, Concerned that we are making too many trees shade trees, that too many trees kind of fall under the, under this rule that you'd have to uh, warn them, and that it was kind of burdensome. And so the way that had been at, on roadsides and road right of ways, it had been framed as any tree six inches in diameter or greater, and we changed it up to eight inches, which is a small change. Uh, it's an arbitrary number at the end of the day, but it makes it a little easier for landowners to kind of 
clear out younger but, but trees. Even if they are six, or in this case, eight inches or larger, they still can be cut with the tree warden's review based on a plan, blah, blah, blah. Somebody wanted to reestablish the traditional shade tree yeah. on a regimen along the roads. They wouldn't be 15 trees over 15 feet. You'd have one every 15 feet. So if that was the plan, someone might want to yeah. create that and provide the best opportunity for growth by clearing in between, right? Yep. And if those trees they were clearing were eight inches or bigger, they would have to, the tree warden would have to warn it for them. Okay. And yep. they'd have to wait so that if someone had a problem with it, it would come before yep. the slack board. Yep. So but it's still doable. It's doable, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's so going, going back to the silver culture, can you just give a, for the record, what? So people know what silviculture is. Yeah, sorry. So silviculture is the art and science of tending communities of trees to meet human goals. Um, and so the, in state statute, they talk about silvicultural activities. Okay, so it's the as art, and, kind of, art and science of to tending communities of trees to meet human goals. Nice. Now, do we have to define that in any way? What would, so somebody can't say, oh, I'm a, I've got a silvicultural plan. But it, I develop myself. I mean, I do or should it's defined be? in state in state statute. Mean what? Um, Human goals. Well, we should reference which definition, because I'm looking at a definition right now. Silviculture is the practice of controlling the growth, composition, structure, and quality of forests to meet values and needs, specifically timber production. So, silviculture, according to that definition, means you could cut them. Every once they get to, you know, yeah, I mean, I think size. I don't know whose definition that is. I think the states is broader than that. It's not focused on timber, right? right? So we should we should cite the definition. Well, but of but, but on, Dan, we'll right? have, have it is it's has it's um, in here as accepted silvicultural practices as defined in 24 VSA 4413. Okay. So the yeah, state right. statute has defined it, okay. and we are using that in page four. One of the changes that's in red here. Okay. Um, yeah, I did read this, but it was a couple of nights ago. So I think we can lean on the state for that. Okay, good. Um, and that, you know, if someone has a, say, an approved forest management plan with the state and they're carrying out activities for that that involve cutting shade trees, they would still need to warn them, but. Um, but the select board couldn't stop them from doing it without a reason. So here's something I just thought of. Um, the power companies come to us when they want to do clear the lines or put in a new line. And it says here, utilities may be exempt. Yes. So how would, so would the utilities, if they're going to clear a bunch of trees, should the tree warden be involved in making that decision in the future? The, um, in the past, the utilities have been kind of, have included the tree warden, moved me in, and have been part of the conversation for that kind of stuff, but they don't have to under state statute. They have rights mm. to manage the okay. right of way, so they're kind of exempt from this. So yeah. The, the uh, statutory definition of accepted, accepted, silviculture practices is really broad. It really says nothing. It <laughs> says, uh, um, this is 10 BSA section 5401, uh, parent one, accepted silvicultural practices means the accepted silvicultural practices defined by the Commissioner of Forests and Parks and Recreation, including acceptable management practices for maintaining water quality on logging jobs in Vermont adopted by the Commissioner of Forests and Parks and Recreation. So it doesn't really do anything in terms of clarifying what is right, what is appropriate, and what is it inappropriate along our roadsides. But, well, but there may be there may be more in regulation. There may be Right, but you can't you can't fix to something a moving thing. We need to find that regulation and import it. And make that ours. Well, if because that's, if the state is changes that, their regulation um, to make it more stringent, ten years after we adopt this, you know this thing is this thing is locked in time. You can't say, oh well, they augmented it, and the public was unaware. They were okay with 
but our ordinance at the time, but then this is not an ordinance. It was. It's not. It's just a plan. It's just a plan. Well, plan. It, it's. I mean, it, we could. Well, a plan. You know, or, we can't have or, a moving plan. Or we can. Or we can. I don't have in front of me what Neil actually sent us, but presumably the language that that he's just shared is fairly. Where is it again? Yeah, I thought of it as aspirational. It says the. The select board shall hold a public hearing to decide the matter. The select board may not unreasonably prevent shade trees from being removed as part of accepted silvicultural practices as defined in 24 BSA 4413. 24 BSA. Um, yeah, I don't know if that's a different definition if it the state be. has defined it, it in be. several places. <laughs> I can't remember BSA, what, what it is says. that? 4413. Okay. Um, so I don't see this as really fundamentally changing this process but okay. but kind of putting a placeholder in that that's that the select board has to be cognizant of you know well and then we're working under the auspices practices. of state legislation as well the whole thing is under state legislation so presumably it's always going to tie back to the states I mean there's state well, John there's state the preservation plan there's references to statute all the way through it you know, if they would, right. um, you know, and those, it's a big those, lift to tell. Well, it's not an ordinance, so it doesn't matter. Okay, good. All right. And if the state legislation changes, it still references right. that language. If you, go, if you go look and say, oh, it's been updated. Right. I mean, it's, 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 it doesn't bother me very much to be tying, you know, to be incorporating from, from the state, even if that's a moving target, because... You know, otherwise we're going to be we're going to have a you know twenty year old. Well, we that's an ordinance, so it's a little different. But you know, twenty year old things that are so out of step. If if people really have a problem with how it gets, how what it means when interpreted through the lens of the state law, then that's a conversation to have. But right, and, and this law, is and the state law changes. It, it then changes, then it too, changes and, too. And presumably that's a good thing. Otherwise, right. we're making it up our little town. Is how many people trying to do so many things? Trying to make it right, up on our own. You wouldn't be able to constantly be updated. No, you can't. The uh, just for clarification purposes, since I brought it up, the language in twenty four BSA section forty four thirteen uh, that involves silvicultural practices is identical word for okay. word to what I already read to you from ten BSA. So it is what it is. Okay, yes. so so I unless there's burning questions. Um, I'd like to, we're at 745, I'd like to, uh, unless there's burning questions. Can burning I mean, questions? No. I just wanted to see if we could get Neil to clean this up, send us a final one with a signature page for us all to sign and a date. Next week. Yep. And then we, can approve, then we could sign and approve it okay. next meeting. Okay. So, It'll be yeah. a consent item on the next agenda. Okay, right. and, the, and just kind of big picture, the idea is that this gets adopted. And then, and then we move on to kind of operationalizing it with an ordinance eventually. Eventually, right, um, right. So. Um, yeah. So, the, so the, the, yeah. The whole point of this conversation tonight is to hear about the updates, to hear how the, the concerns that were raised got resolved, and yes, um, we'll get a, a clean version from Neil, and then I will put it on the consent agenda next time. Yeah, we have it. Which doesn't mean that somebody can't say. Yeah, sure. But. We have on our February 13th meeting schedule that we worked on to have this again on the 13th to approve and sign. Okay, on the 13th. Yep. Yep. Okay. yep. All right. Good. Thank you very Thanks. much, Neil. Nice Thanks for your work. Thanks, Thank you. Neil. Nice work. Yes. Nick, we are ready for you. Okay, I brought the form for us to sign. Thank you, Stephanie. Thank you, Stephanie. Okay. Uh, as you know, the town opened a shelter site at the, at the elementary school uh, that last big snowstorm. Yes, you did. And with lots of help from Rick and Denise. Uh, Red Cross will come. They did not formally, they were not formally assisting that shelter opening. Uh, but they are available to do so. And they've been in, in October, they came in and toured the school and the town hall. Um, and they uh, recommend or offer to sign a, a facility use agreement with us so that 
uh, of the owner of the building, so that if there were a really s severe uh, situation where we needed them to come in and manage the shelter, we would already have this agreement in place. It's their boilerplate. Uh, and so I'm recommending that in the case of the town hall, which is owned by the town, and there'd be a separate agreement uh, with Cal's Elementary, which is owned by the Supervisory Union, I believe. Right, and what about Maple Corner Community Center? Uh, Maple Corner Community Center said, you know, we could, we could help you with cots and stuff, but we probably wouldn't come in and manage because the building's not large enough for them to, to house their staff and didn't quite uh, have enough facility. So Red Cross of the Mount Corner Community Center is not big enough? Not big enough for them to take responsibility <laughs> for managing it. They said this would be great for you to independently run, <coughs> um, but not big enough for them. It takes too much resource in right. the disaster there doing a lot of things. So, <laughs> so actually, I'm going to ask a question that I, I should have asked before, but I didn't. Have we had our legal counsel look at this? The agreement? No, because we just got it. And Nick said that there's, <coughs> I printed it, but I forgot to bring it. Um, this thing you sent the form? Yes. We should have, probably have Joe yeah. look okay. at it before we, and you said there was no rush. There's no rush, depending Less on what happens in the next six <laughs> weeks. <laughs> <laughs> We got a couple of storms coming, you said. Yes. Yeah. We'll just yeah. have to, we'll just we'll have just to, have to do it ourselves with it. Yeah. As long as it stays <clears throat> cold. So, yeah, so Nick, I apologize that we didn't think, I, I didn't think of that question oh, before. No we should, yeah. if there's, yeah. So we should have run it by our legal counsel um, before we we sign okay. it. Okay. Can I just ask a question about You can do it on the 13th. What, could you, what's involved in there really, really? What do they do when they manage it? Uh, I think they organize um, food and they have security. You know, someone comes and says, I'll volunteer, and they, they're a bad actor, and they, um, they and bring in. I, I don't know all of what they do. They make, I can tell. They, they basically they manage, you know, they bring in staff. They but do they, and do they, does it mean that they're managing, does it mean more supplies and more? Oh, yeah, they gave us cots and blankets to use. They, they show up with a big old truck with a lot of supplies. So we had, uh, yeah, these are self-contained, basically. So they're very quick to turn around. I mean, like in, in our case, we were on Christmas Eve, very difficult. We, I was sick and we had, I mean, it was very difficult to even find people and resources. You know, people like Red Cross can activate very fast. We use them to rely on the Business Operations Center. They tend to be the experts at getting these up and running really efficiently, really fast, and having the support, it's a very good thing. We, um, we had, when I was at uh, Vermont College of Fine Arts, I mean, we had an MOU with them and the city to do, to use the, uh, uh, the, the alumni hall, which is a okay. big gymnasium, to do just this. Thank you. Okay, so, <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. so that's fine. I will forward. <clears throat> To our attorney, okay. The document that you sent, yeah, and then we can put it on probably for next week, next meeting, the thirteenth. Mm -hmm. sure. I don't think it'll take Joe long to look at it. Do people want it um, to have another discussion, or do you guys want to have it on the consent agenda? Consent agenda. Consent. Okay. Yeah. Where it's done. And it's it's uh, you'll see it's very simple. It's. Um, I, I did read it. It's not legalese, it's yeah. common sense, horse sense kind of stuff. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, cool. We are cooking with right gas. Right. Right. Um, okay, so we are on the town <laughs> meeting. meeting. Uh, we did the Curtis Pond petition item, and now we have to um, the warning. look at the warning overall. I printed out the version we got back from Jeremy. This one with the red one? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I have. Is that a reasonably good one to be yeah. looking at? Yeah. Is that the one dated right It came in an email from, from Jeremy. Jeremy. Um, I sent it out to everybody. Jeremy sent back an updated version mm -hmm. with some red lines. Mm -hmm. Red ink. And that came on at, today at 3.21 p.m. Yeah. And looks like everybody got it. Yep, yeah, everybody did. In your emails. 
Because um, we need to run this by Joe pretty quick here. Still, right. So actually, why don't we, before we look at the warning, let's talk about where we're going to have our meeting. Right. Because that will... Well, I think, Mark, you had said something about it looked like something was going to pass out of the legislature maybe tomorrow. Yes. The legislature did pass it, didn't they? Yeah. It's waiting for the governor's signature. I was waiting for the governor. Oh, is that right? I think I read that what's somewhere. The name? What, what's the bill what number? I forwarded to you. I can't remember. The what? You, did it have a bill number? Was it H? Uh, I 42. It was Act 78. Now it's H something or other. Uh, I can get there. Act 78 would have been the previous right. one. Um, and they couldn't extend that because it expired on January 15th, right? Something like that. Um, Was it H42? Yep. Annual town meeting, H42. We have an email. It's called H42. It's on the governor's desk. Yep. Um, Denise, you sent us an email mm -hmm. um, on from Friday. FMA. Yeah, it was something from VLCT. Yep. And now it heads to the governor's desk for his signature. Right. So I guess what we don't know is, you know, the governor you thought that was likely to sign it, right, Mark? Well, let's let's talk about if let's make the assumption that I it gets texted the governor's office. See. Let's let's make the assumption that it gets passed. So where it gets signed. So what this will do is authorize us. We flip back and forth as we have new information. So the last we heard, there wasn't going to be an option to do a town our town meeting. The, or let me say it another the way. way. They've done it the last two years. The only option for town meeting was going to be um, a la pre-COVID and doing it in person. Now we've flipped back to there might be um, an option to do it um, without having a formal town meeting and instead having an informational session where we um, provide information about the warned items and the budget and Gus moderates on Zoom. And then on on an Australian ballot, the, all these items, people can vote up or down, yes or no. The difference being, obviously, we're on Zoom, not in person. But the other difference being, in person, um, we're taking the items up and voting on them at town meeting, which provides opportunity for discussion and amendment to mm -hmm. to the warned items. The other way you can answer, we can answer questions on Zoom, um, but when it comes to voting, people vote on Australian ballot. They vote vote yes or they vote no on each right. warned item. And there's no way to make a change because the stuff is already right. on the ballot. So there's no way to make a change. So the question becomes, if assuming the governor does sign the legislation and we now have an option to do an informational meeting followed with everything being voted by us about Australian ballot, and we still have the option of doing in person. Um, we we have to. I would. I'm going to say we have to decide. So I just heard from the governor's office. All right. What did they say? Action due by midnight Thursday. There's a discipline ID bill review process. It takes a few days, barring any fatal. Drafting areas, errors, or trickery, we expect it will become law. Okay. On Thursday. On Thursday. Now we're meeting yeah. on the thirtieth, but the deadline. I mean, we are really, we are really pushing the envelope for right. for the town, for people to react, for the for things to get published, for an well, right, to get stuff to the printers and get the ballot printed, and to get organized. This has to go in the town report. Right. To get, or, to get organized around a town meeting in person or to get organized around an informational session on Zoom. Cliff has always done that for us. I have no idea if he's able around. I'm sure he would. Able to do it again. I talked to him, I talked to him a few nights ago. I mean, ago. we're reasonably comfortable with Zoom. That's, that's the good it's, news. It has, it has worked out. Last year, we did, John, I think John and I were here last year and everybody else was on Zoom or something. I think you were on Zoom too. I think John was the only one here. No, I think I was here because I remember all the stuff. Yeah. Okay. But um, either way, we have to. I think we have to decide. It sounds like the, from that the governor will sign it. 
Right. So the, I think we could, it would be an option. It becomes an option. So, but that doesn't mean we have to take it. So, right. Right. but I would like us to make a decision tonight on what we're going to do. Um, can we do a, either way? Can, if we decide we're going to do it the way we've done it the last two years because of the illnesses, can we condition a motion based on the governor signing the bill? And if we and if he doesn't for some reason, then we revert back to. I mean, I've gotten quite a bit of feedback from people asking, are we going to do it in person? Are we going to do it on Zoom? And people are really concerned about the spreading of this new variant of COVID, which is highly contagious. And the current vaccines that we've had is supposed to not protect people from, from that. So there's a lot of people who aren't even going to go to town meeting that probably would have gone before. And I'm hearing that, you know, let's let's be safe. Let's think about people's health. Let's be safe. You know, you've got this RSV going around, which I've known several people who've had that and ended up in the hospital. So I really want us to think about, yes, in-person is the best, but what is the best option to protect folks? Others, Mark? Thoughts? I favor in person. You favor in person. I do. John? I think you guys know my reason. Uh, no, no, no. Actually, no. Uh, no, go ahead and expound, uh, and then I'm going to turn to John. <clears throat> uh, I think that, um, I guess I'm influenced by the fact that right now COVID rates in Vermont are low, by the fact that um, the legislature is meeting in person, <clears throat> and that I'm concerned about losing town meeting. Absolutely not. I mean, this isn't a situation where I disagree with any of the factors that Denise pointed out, nor do I think that Denise disagrees, I would suspect, no, I'm, with the I'm factors just, I'm, I'm pointing out. I'm just, I'm just pointing saying, out. Yeah, I mean, there they are. I would weigh in favor of an in-person town meeting where people wear masks. But we can't require No, we cannot masks. require it, but, you know. And... I would hate for us to be a super spreader. Well, okay, but you've spoken. Anything you want to add? No. John? It's a tough one. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a crystal ball reader. Um, so my inclination right now is to, to go the way Mark is suggesting. Um, I think remote is awful. I go to the legislature even though I have the option of doing it remotely. And it's it's a whole different level of effect. Um, so I, I just think there's a problem with remote town meeting. I think it's a triage approach. And I expect if something dire happens that beyond this legislation, which is too little too late legislature, um, that you, you take all you, over, all your, you're fully you responsible for this is everything this. the House and Senate does, fault, Mark. Mark. It's all your fault now. Um, it used to be Child Janet's, now it's yours. Care, um, everything. Um, I, I would expect that they will come up, if it's going to be a disaster in the making, they will come up with some emergency declaration from the governor's office and they will stop town meeting. Just like he stopped us, we could, let's remember 2020. We weren't even allowed to go for walks with people other than immediate family. And then it could only be one person. We needed to walk six feet apart outside with a mask on. And that was a governor's edict. So they have a lot of power. <laughs> um, so I, 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 I would go I think with. <laughs> OK, <clears throat> yeah, you were five and a half feet. I heard about so, it. So, so I, I, I would suggest we just do a regular town meeting. Uh, and in the hopes that if something serious, really serious happens, that the governor's office and commissioner of the Department of Health will step in. Okay, Rick. I really deeply believe in town meeting, and I'm worried like you are. But so I've just gotten over COVID six weeks ago, and I am still very sick from this. And I would, it really worries me. And I'm fully vaxxed, and we've been very careful. You know, I'm putting. I, big group of people together in close proximity. I, that really puts some hesitation on me right now. 
to take this on. I'm not trusting that necessarily we will get an edict from above if this, you know, we do know this is highly contagious, you know, the version going around. And it's a long time until town meeting hits. You know, so I still, I mean, I, you know, yeah, I really believe in town meeting. I want to do that, but I also do not want people to go through this, you know, this, this, this virus. You know, if we, I don't want to be the reason we have a super spreader event. And, uh, you know, so I kind of, I kind of lean toward going remote last, this last year, if possible. Well, there you go, Madam Chair. Well, yeah, <laughs> um, is that Damocles sword? You're right. Um, hmm. The people who have, that I'm remembering, Denise has mentioned she's heard from people, but I haven't heard from people. And in and, and this juncture, I actually find that compelling. You know, I would like to have heard from people, you know, directly if they feel that strongly about it uh, you know um i don't know how many people you're hearing from i don't but but i'm not hearing from people there's nothing showing up in our inbox um and i would prefer that people not do that i like them to come here the folks who have come here have said that they would like us to do it in person um yes they have. that's what we've that's what we've heard is concerns about our our democracy and as we do it, as we do it in, in small towns in Vermont, and I, I think um, I I find myself drawn to remote because, frankly, I think it's easier. <laughs> um, but that's the wrong reason. That's the wrong reason to do it remotely because it's easier for us. Is the wrong reason. Um, and if I weren't on the board looking for what's easier, I would be, I would be, you know, and I have, you know, we've had, um, I don't know if you were in town, Mark, everybody else was, and we, we had, you know, we went to the, we went to the mats over Australian ballot or not. Um, and, you know, that was a hard, that was hard. Those were hard days um, with a lot of very strong opinions, but ultimately we defended doing town meeting because it is where we get our work done as a small town. We can get it done other ways, but it's not, there's not another way where we talk to each other in person, have it out, um, have an opportunity to amend. That's just huge. That, that's huge. An opportunity to amend, make a point, be persuasive among, um, among the citizens and, and have, you know, change the outcome is so powerful. Um, People have to listen to each other. Hmm? They have to actually. Hear they have to listen to each other. You have to. You have to come. You have to listen. You have to care. You have to engage. It's not by email. It's not about email, and it's not about you know us. I think also it preserves that idea that we did the best we can and we present a budget and gives people a chance to say, well, we don't like your budget um, and we really want to change it. I know this is super hard because I, I but yeah, I hear also the health concerns. Um, I like the idea of we can't compel people to wear masks, but we can all wear masks. We can encourage people to wear masks. Um, you know, and I go back to something you just mentioned where Australian ballot, and, I, and this is the uh, and discussion we've had at many town meetings, Australian ballot does give everybody that wants to vote a chance to vote, not just the people that go to town meeting. I am a strong proponent of town meeting and having those in-person, face-to-face discussions. Um, but you, know, you also have to think about the people that can't get there, the people who won't come this time, again, because of the health concerns. We have a lot of you know, aging population in Calais. Well, you know, and I, I don't disagree with you, Denise, but I, and I brought this up and I'm gonna bring it up one more time, you bear with me. An anecdote from when I lived in Woodbury, where at the time, at the very least, its school budget 
It was voted on on the town meeting floor. And there was a proposal at the time for a substantial um, increase to the school budget. They were going to put a wing on the school. And the, if anyone knows the Woodbury School, they were going to run the wing out onto the little baseball field for which we had photos dating back to 1909, people playing baseball on that field. It's that old, it's that historic. And um, so there was a lot of dialogue in town meeting. And they, the, the school was out of compliance with state um, regulations. Um, and they anticipated a population spike that would get to like 106, 108 students. And a citizen on the floor asked the, the chair of the school board, Pat Flood, Patrick Flood. So 106 is going to peak out in a few years, and that's what we're shooting for, two or three years. Yeah. Where are we going to be five years from now, from then? And they're like, well, it's going to drop to like 99. And then five years from then, oh, it's going to be down to 85. So we only need this wing to get us through like a six year window. Yep. And so this guy, Lynn Gallison, suggested, well, why don't we just build a, we need one classroom more, right? Yep. Let's build another classroom. We, there's a spot behind the school. Let's do that. And we'll do it like a community barn raising. And they struck that significant line item was like six or $800,000 back then. Um, and this is the mid nineties. And they instead, you know, put a much smaller amount, $20,000 in there. And uh, the community came together, Greaves Building Supply, which is no longer, it's now Poolin, donated building supplies. Everyone came in and they built what is now the library, but that was a room up, that was a, another classroom and they still put the elevator in, which was another requirement. So that's, that was really a moment for me to understand the value of town meeting. Now, had it gone Australian ballot, it would no question have been voted down. I would have voted against it and we would have been out of compliance and we ran a risk of shutting the school, the, the state shutting the school down. They had just shut the school down and, or threatened the school at uh, Albany school at that time. So, um, I think town meeting is wonderful and that, that's a, a good, good story to give people pause if they ever talk about getting rid of town meeting. How do you want to proceed? Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree. I, like I said, I prefer in person. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I just want to raise the concern that I've heard. Right. I mean, I think we've all said everything that's been said, everybody agrees with this question right. of how you balance it. We have to, yeah, we have to, well, to we have to make a decision. We have to, we have to vote. Okay, so, um, does somebody want to make a motion? I'll move that we proceed with town meeting as usual. In person. 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 I'll second that. And you'll second that. Any other discussion? <laughs> all right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Really? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to go that way. No, I told you. My, I, I told you. My concern is the health risk. I prefer in person. Oh, no, no, it, it, was was his, his, uh, it was his eye she was saying. No, yeah. both of you. I mean, you're allowed to say Did no. Did you vote Everybody, I they, 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 so I, we're I, unanimous. Well, I prefer town meeting. I just want in yeah, person. To say and I wanted, just wanted to raise the concerns that I've heard. I yeah. hope to God. Yeah. And the and the information and the information and the information that I'm getting from health experts in the area from right. yeah. Plainfield Health Center. Yeah, they're well, raising the flag. If it's real, it'll be shut down. Well, no, maybe, 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 I don't maybe know. Not. And I, I do want to, I do want to encourage us. We, we can't apparently require masks. Maybe, maybe we'll be allowed to require masks. We can maybe. put a sign up saying masks very strongly encouraged. Can we provide them? There? Yes, and we can. absolutely. Yes, we can, and let's, and let's provide totally, really yeah. good. We should have sanitation, that hand stuff, good masks. Really good, like the N ninety and ninety five. Uh, well, we could have some of those, and then the others, because the N ninety fives they're really hard to breathe out of yeah. and out of for a long That's period right. of time. That's right. But and you don't want anybody and to you pass can't out. Talk. But no, yeah, it. but good surgical masks, good N ninety fives, and then we should wear them. If we're not wearing masks, right, guys? Mm -hmm. Seriously, if right. we're so not wearing masks, we are not encouraging. If we're going to strongly encourage, I've been to meetings where everything says strongly encourage, and then the leadership isn't wearing a mask. Right. That is not a strong encouragement. So. Okay. So we so we voted on that. Yep. 
All right. So, all right. That's a big decision. Um, so we're going to do it in person. Um, and now we, we, just need, yeah, we need to walk, you want to walk us through the warning. Yeah. So I've been working on this warning. I think I have about 12 different drafts on my computer. Um, Jeremy's last comments, I think are, are right on. So I think we should incorporate his comments. His edits. His, his edits, right, his edits. And that takes us to Article 3, that we don't need to do a town agent anymore. Um, some, we have two cemetery commission. Those are from the floor. OK. If you're looking at Jeremy's edits. Yeah. Um, Barbara helped me out with Article 10, which is to check the date for when the second installment is due. Um, and I'll double check her figure, her date. And then I forgot how to, I, I must have forgotten how to count. Because I miscounted the, <laughs> that's nothing, article numbers. Mm -hmm. And then he added article 20, which is what we talked about earlier, which is the article for the Curtis Pond Dam. And we approved putting it on with a friendly amendment. So I will add that piece <coughs> to this. But this, and I found out today also, I learned something else new, that even though it's gonna be a voted by ballot item, you still have to put it on the warning and then it just says by Australian ballot. So, okay. and then I need to get Jodas or Jodas read it and sign off on it. So I don't know how you want to go about getting this signed. Um, we have to, do we approve it right we now? We should approve it now, and then I could leave it tomorrow on the little table at the town office for yeah. everybody to stop by and sign. Does that work for folks? You found something else, John? I don't understand what Jeremy has given us. Where? Tell me where. Oh, I'm sorry. Never mind. I do it's understand. It's all the red stuff. So that's fine with me. Well, okay. So, but I, I, I'll put it out there. Why don't I send you guys an email after Joe's looked at it and said, okay, he's, he's looked at it. And that's where, because I had the question about, I didn't know you had to put this on the ballot. Can it be signed in counterparts and print it out, sign it, scan it, and send it back? Well, I was, gonna, I was, I was going to offer to DocuSign. I can do it through DocuSign, but I've done that before. You guys have gotten emails from me to sign something electronically. Right. Okay. But you have to do it. Okay. Okay? I can. It's just yeah. that I'm going to tomorrow. tomorrow. I'm gonna be in well, process. Joe's probably not even going to. Joe's probably so, going to look at it So tomorrow. that works well for you. It's what? No. I like electronic yeah. So you can do it tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can. Sure. Well, Melanie's got planning commission, so she'll have the car. I'm but you, but you're going to do it on the computer. It's yeah, the remote yeah. signature. I can do that. So, can okay. So, what I will That's ask fine. you, I'll ask you also, is use your when those come through to you, you can use your authentic signature. Um, yeah, you can. You can use your finger if you're on an iPad. Um, it my. Looks awful. My PDF <laughs> has my signature that I've got stored in there, so it recognizes. So that is, I mean, it's not illegal for you to use a canned signature, but it's nicer, nicer if yeah. it's nicer if it's your real signature. Okay. So if you can right. find a way to use your. Just on I sign. I have a file. It's my me signature. Too. Me too. Can does DocuSign let me use that file, or do I just have to manually? It's a, it comes. I don't know. Is okay. is the answer? I mean, when I open it up, it gives you like you can use your trackpad. That is an option. You can use your trackpad to to sign or it. Or your mouse. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna make a motion. So you'll send it to me. Right. When, and I will when, send it around for, set it up for everybody to sign electronically. Right. And then what I probably do, that'll be the last one and I'll print it off, sign it and take it to the town. It's going to come to, I can't remember. It, it might go to everybody. It will certainly come to me when everybody, when everybody has signed. signed it and then I'll yeah, send it to you. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then I can. And that's going to happen tomorrow. I'm going to get it tomorrow. I hope so. I'm going to send this to Joe first thing with the changes. Okay. So that'll save everybody having to drive it all over. Right. To yeah, make that happen. Good. So um, I'm going to make a motion 
to approve the latest warning with edits by Jeremy to update the warned the Article 20, which is about the Curtis Pond Dam um, bond vote, as we discussed earlier with the language. It's only a little bit of a sentence. It's just what it does, Mark, is it just says um, it puts in the total amount of the project at $700,000. Okay. And then I'm going to send it to Sharon, who's going to send it around to us to document the <laughs> link That's you. after Thank Joe you. looks at it. And he knows it's coming. Okay. And he's already looked at it. It's, so I don't think it'll take him long. So Denise just made a motion. Right. <laughs> that we approve I'll, this. I'll second it. Do we need to put all that, what we're going to, I think we put all that stuff that we're going to do in the motion. Sure. Um, did you second it? He did. All right. Any other discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Um, what can I just ask you a point of information? Yes. I just remember at town meetings that Janet used to come, and I, I've just been assuming I have to go to all three town meetings. Yes. Oh, and that's something. A little, yeah, you yeah, should have that. Okay. That doesn't have to be on this, on the agenda, does it? Or no. no. It just no. We always you just moderate the moderator to right. provision. He asked right. the voters if it's okay if yeah. uh, Mahali your representative. And Janet always came to us last because we were going to have lunch. I'm just, we're not having lunch this year because. Lunch people aren't inclined to do it, and it's probably okay. just another better way to not yeah. keep mingling. Okay. Um, okay, so the other thing then is we have to do an informational meeting on the bond vote. Right, and it has to be 10 days, no, at least 10 days, or no more than, no more than 10 days prior to, okay. to, the, to the vote. Oh, so we can't do it at our regular select board meeting. Um, I don't know. It depends. No, because... Oh, wait a minute. No, maybe we can do it on the 27th. Because town meeting is on the 7th. So I don't think you count the 7th. So you have to go back. Six. Wait a minute. One, two, three. Seven, eight. Oh, we can. Yeah, we can do it on the 27th. We can do it on the 27th. So what, you, time, what say you about an informate, Jamie, public information meeting on, on at 6.30 on February 27th? 12.27 at 6.30 CPA info meeting. And I know um, I'll go back and look at Bob's emails, which tells us what we where we... We have to post it in all these different locations and blah, blah, blah. So I'm willing to work with Jamie to make that happen. So, so 6.30. Yeah. Is that enough time? Yeah. I think so. And if yeah, we go over so a little bit. People who yeah. are super interested, I'm just, yeah, we could. But, but guys, please write down 6.30 because sometimes we get we, surprised. We um, can I throw in one comment? Uh -huh. um, the Curtis Pond Association will likely host additional meetings. That's great. And I assume we'll be here. Okay. We'd like to do, I mean, the one you're talking about now will be here. Well, we have to do that. Yeah. We'll, we'll likely host one maybe in East Callis, one at the community center, and we would invite, <coughs> um, you know, the board all or some or a couple, depending mm -hmm. on what you want to warn, um, to join us in those mm -hmm. meetings. But I, I, our goal is to have three around. Town. Yeah, that's great for you to do it. If good. if any if we um, if if folks are in, I I guess my my gut is if three of us show up, we have to warn it. Not for not making a decision. But we always have. I know we always have. So yeah, I mean we should be coordinated. We're gonna. I I frankly won't because. But potentially Denise or John. Yeah, yeah. but even if both the, of them go, the if it's not a forum, or if other people are inclined to go, maybe get well, in touch touch with. Yeah, we just make sure that we're not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's not three of us, right? Right. You might go to some. Well, right, because you'll be going. So there you go. So but that's, but he recuses. Is that? No, he's still, he's still a member still of the board. Member of the board. Well, yeah, so you, if three of us are going to show up, 
We're going to have to do a three. Yeah. We're going to all three show up. We're going to have to warn it. Otherwise, I'm, yeah. just one of the small. Do you think you'll be inclined to go to those meetings? Sure. Okay. All right. Then I guess we should warn them. Do we, uh, I would, I'd like well, to. well, well the, I'm not going to go to everyone. Right. Right. Yeah. But if we, I think we could do a special meeting agenda, list the dates that you're going to do the informational meetings just in case a quorum shows up and post it. Yeah, that's fine. Right? Yep. But I want to make sure that they don't you know, think it's us. Right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. Too, I mean, would we be able, does that give us latitude? Yeah, yeah, then we all should make a If we're actually ask questions, we can actually do that as a body, too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. As long as we're not making a decision that is yeah. this the yeah. only information yeah. items that is requiring an informational meeting? The statute requires us to have one. I know. Yes. There, there's no other. Okay. No. And there's places we have to post it. And, and Gus is stuck with being moderator, right? Well, he yeah. has to get elected. He has to get. I thought you get elected for the next year. Right. So he's still currently moderator because we say for the ensuing year. Yeah. All right. So I'll yeah. let him know yeah. that yeah. I made a note to let him know we're doing it in person. Um, yeah. He actually, oh, we probably should meet with him too. We've done that before. We so. should go over the warning and stuff with him. He actually, yeah, he emailed me and was encouraging that we do in person. Yeah, okay. Um, there was a, it's on here, but I want to just make sure everybody's aware that we had a, um, an East Montpelier Fire Department addition that we, that we didn't have on our radar when we were working on the budget. Well, there was an error on their part. Okay, but either way, right. it wasn't on our radar. And which item was that? Was it, it the is the item? Yeah, I updated the warning with the new number. It is article number 15. Shall the town appropriate the sum of 66,564? So it went up about $3,000. I'm amazed that it didn't go down. And, and what you said to me, Denise, you explained that it doesn't, that is a separate way of warrant item and it does not affect. Doesn't affect what we're voting on as a total budget because it falls under the category of social services where if all of these items get approved, this is what the tax rate will be. And Wendy's already taken care of making that adjustment for the document that will appear in the town report. But. <laughs> and so and when we voted our overall, when we voted our budget here, we voted the overall town budget made up of general fund and, and highway, highway right. and we didn't talk about no, adding don't. articles. Okay. No, we don't vote on those. The voters vote that. Helen Hubbard Library. <coughs> right. Um, cemetery. They have, the cemetery. Say, they have the power to say no, not 66,000, 60,000. Right. Yeah, yeah, so they could do that, but that is not included in our total budget right. item. Of right. This is additive. It does. It does mean I'm going to make a tweak to the numbers that went in our report and in the pie chart. Right, and like I said, Wendy updated the sheet that will go in the town report for the projected tax rate if all these special articles pass. Okay, so. Um, let's look at future agenda items, folks. We've made it way all the way through our agenda for tonight. And we're only at 8.30. It's 8.30, which is nice, Wonderful. but we started at 6. This is true. Um, okay, so we did, we did um, a bunch of appointments and reappointments tonight, but we generally, well, no, some of them are carrying over. The one years, we, we didn't step across the March line for the one years, which is confusing, so I wanted to re-hit that point. We may have some more next time that we can do. Mm -hmm. um, we, there's a new president at Woodbury that we hope to invite to meet with us. Um, we may not have anything Curtis Pond that we need to do next time. Yeah, I was gonna say, is there, well, I'm not sure there's anything there is, else, right? Think of anything, Jamie? What the board has to do that it hasn't done? No, not unless the only thing I we might have is we might insurance? have an update about insurance. No. Right. I, oh, right, right, right. So let's yeah. keep our radar open to that. Right. So I'll put that on there. Didn't insurance we, update. Didn't we get information? Or I'm sorry, did you present it already? Didn't we get information on the insurance that the builder yes. carries? Yes. 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 yeah, yeah. No, Jamie yeah. gave us that. I'm going to be. Do you guys, Rick and, yeah. Rick and John, Denise, um, I didn't, I should have asked that. Are, do you, um, 
you and Stephanie have been working on Callis Road and Bridge standards. I feel, even though it's not seasonable, I think I feel like it would be really important to put that background on the record. Yeah, um, I'll talk with her. Don't you think? Yeah, let's. Yeah, she and I should do something. I put something out there just so it's on the record and yeah. that we hit it again before everybody leaves the board. Yeah. It's a super important topic. Um, Rick and John, do you guys want to talk about reducing county road speed limit at the next meeting? I'll have that language ready to go. Okay. Um, and you. then... And I'm going to make some other adjustments for your consideration. To what? Well, the ordinance we had in play, there was a stop sign or a yield sign. We need to figure out what we want to do here. That was a request. You mean the end of Canton Hill Road? That one? Yep, the bottom right there. David Allen Bogan. David Allen Bogan. Yeah. We did also have a request about a stop sign at the base of Center Road in Adamant Village. Oh. So I'll put that in there for you to consider. And I would also like to, uh, well, there's a yield sign that Don Singleton put without running it through the ordinance at the end of Singleton Road where it meets Fowler. Hmm. We should decide whether we want to keep that there. So you're going to commissioners just used to put signs up. So you're going to update that ordinance? And I'll update yeah. that. And okay. I would okay. like uh, <clears throat> to suggest that the speed on Singleton Road be lowered to 30 from 35. It's a windy road. 35? That road is 35. That insane road is 35. And ours is. 30, ours is 35? Yeah, yeah. No, we go, go down, try to go down to the center road. It's not 30, it is not straight. <laughs> you gotta take the right so of the So there's that. Um, well, anything Ray else? Ray and I would also Ray suggest Ray. that. You mean? Tucker has some sharp corners. I would also suggest that the speed limit north of Maple Corner be lowered to 30 because it's north it goes to 25 to 35 and it's. You mean on the paved road? No, mm -hmm. north. North. Okay, you know I don't it's know all, there's, I know you. <laughs> One day. You live north of Maple Corner. Yes, I do. So you mean the dirt road. I would I would suggest the dirt road be lowered. It's a, there's a lot of houses there, there's a lot of activity it there. It and it's 35 after you leave the 25. Um, and I was gonna suggest that we lower it to 30 until you reach the intersection of uh, Robinson Cemetery Road and West County Road. Make your suggestions. I'm, I'm, I'm going to add them yeah, in and you guys it. can say yes. You're going to yes put Tucker no. Road at 30 or 35? Put that, whatever, 30. Okay. And do Bank Kamala Road at the same time. You got to Okay, you, all right. You clearly have to offer him something. No, but can no, you. I don't, you know, I'm fine. I, I think these roads should be slowed down. 35 is freaking fast. It really well, John, is. John, you've been on Bank Kamala Road. Should that road be 35? I think it should be 45. Go, I think the people, I want to see somebody go down Bain Hill going 35 miles an hour. Right. I know these roads, they, they generically put 35 everywhere. Huh? Yeah. And so, I don't and, know. I'll and are that. you going to work on junk ordinance? You are going to write a letter? I'm going to I'm write a letter to state, not write a junk ordinance. I'm asking them to enforce their law. Okay, well, so I still have that, that you're going to bring a letter. Yep, I'll okay. do that too. Okay. Yep. Um, it's the junk ordinance. It's not an ordinance, it's a letter requesting the state. Enforce the law. So we want to take we want to with take regard to a complaint we see. I think everything it. here is still on. I didn't cross anything off. Um, and we got a couple of things road. that are carrying over from Lightning tonight. Um, right, we're gonna do the curb cut okay. thing, which is on here. We're gonna do shade tree, which is on here. That's more mm -hmm. I'll talk to Stephanie about the emergency next thing or emergency management contract. We're gonna keep on right. here. Um, a couple, I skipped over round robin, but I do have a couple of items I want to mention to you guys. I got an email from the people who own land south of the Pattersons on County Road. And where are the Pattersons where on County is. Road? The oh, Barb. Barb and Bob and Patterson, Bob. yeah. Um, I, know the I think we all, we all got this. We all got it in December. Um, mm. From Julian Goodrich. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She, Bob, Barb Patterson, like, who works for... So are, are they living... Stone environment? Yes. Yeah. She has nothing to do with this, except that, that this guy is a neighbor to them. So Julian Goodrich's... Poor Barb, never mind yeah, Barb. No, does she live in Julian Goodrich's old house? Yes, apparently. Okay. So they cool. still own land next Isn't door. Weird? And Rick, if you could look at this email from December 7th. Well, you have seen it, didn't you? Here it is. They, the, he's saying we want to that the town is going to put a road sign 
on County Road, halfway between the north and south borders of their property. I don't even want to get into the substance of this. I don't know whether this is a legitimate concern or not, or whether, I mean, we should put it where the town needs to put it. Well, that's what we're we went it. Oh was, my goodness, really? I, the reason was, you know, these are solar signs and we need sun. If you go farther each way, we end up in the shade and it's a, a visibility. We drove that road very carefully. That's what I, that's why I picked that site. That's what I, I figured you'd say, yeah. um, is so that- So the south corner of the lot doesn't work. Well, I think, I think Rick should Shadier. respond to the email. So Rick, can you respond to that email? Um, yeah. if we got it. Yeah, I can do that. What um, if we trim the trees? We got it from Bar we got it from Barbara. Sorry, it came I as a letter. That. So if you got if you could just he gave he gave us his email address. So if you could respond to him and say that I mean his point is it is significantly affects the value of the lot. That's hard for me to it doesn't accept. I, can't that. Imagine. I would think yeah. they'd be happy that there's a sign there slowing people down right it's there. Safety. Yeah, their driveway. Yeah, so they're hosting and doing their part for the small town that they, they yeah. So if you could respond to him. The other issue is I got an email um, from, uh, this is also for you. It might not have been an email. It might have been a text. Um, concerns about, there's a, um, Callis Trails has a trail on Offen Gray, Max Gray Road. Offen Max Gray Road on um, Paul Hannon's property, Butterfield Trails or Butterfield Farm Trails or something. They're gorgeous trails if anybody's been over there. Um, but I got a text from somebody saying, I use those trails. Um, could the town plow the little the little spot there is to, for people to pull off into um, so that when people are using the trails, they're not parking right on the road? Really road? I this can't. is the bottom of Max Gray where the trailhead is for those town. Tra they're not, they're on uh, their town, they're Callis Town, Callis Trail Committee trails on private property. There apparently is a spot where people park that's not a problem the rest of the year, but during the winter, is that it, little spot. Is it in the right way? I don't know. We're not going to plow if it's out of right of way. It must be in the right of way if it's, it's in, like right there, right off Max Gray Road. I don't even, I'm not sure where that spot is. I suppose, I mean, we can certainly ask the guys to. Could somebody look at it? Back. I'll send you a, I'll yeah, find the text or the email and okay, send it along right. to you to just take a look. Where is this? At the Max bottom Gray. of Max Gray Road where Ooh. there's some callous trails and people use those trails and they park on the road and there's yeah. apparently a spot that could be plowed. Um, if you have a tip, I don't see a problem with pushing snow. Pushing snow right. off the spot. Yeah. Yeah. Those were the two things that were on my down, mind too. Is it down near the curb? Is it down, you know, below the, the, the flats? Well, you can get the guys for it. Yeah, it's, I don't, I don't know. I, if I'm accessing those trails, I frankly don't access from that spot. You never go on them, so I don't know where They're you're... gorgeous trails. They really are. So it's 8.35. Anybody else got something else to bring up? No. No, no, no. Um, okay, are we ready to adjourn? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Great. Good meeting, guys.